Hey guys, what's up? I'm Josh. I'm Taylor. And this is our newest video. We're watching Batgirl vs. Spider-Gwen, DC vs. Marvel Death Battle. Hope you guys like it. Enjoy. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, and even on an empty stomach, so you can be ready whenever the moment arises. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at a pharmacy. And it should... I'm sorry the video started like that. I, I, don't, I don't know why they did that. ...ships right wow. to your door in a discreet package. Since Blue Chew prepares and ships directly, they're cheaper than the pharmacy, and you don't even need to leave the house. We've got a special deal just for you guys. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code BATTLE. Just pay $5 in shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com, promo code BATTLE to try it free. <laughs> Who runs the world? The ladies! So obviously there's a bunch of awesome crime-fighting chicks out there. Like Barbara Gordon, the DC Comics vigilante known as Batgirl. And Marvel's Gwen Stacy, the one you know as Spider-Gwen. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Barbara Gordon always had a connection to crime-fighting. Her father was Gotham City's police commissioner, and she idolized the legendary superhero, Batman. So she whipped up her own bat costume to crash a police ball. Yeah, she's a rebel. Just like every other, just super fan, just dressing up just like your hero, just so you can try and save the day. I remember she did the exact same thing in Harley Quinn. Mm, mm, mm. But plot twist! A criminal crashed it first and she wound up saving the day! This sparked a fire in Barbara. A fire for justice. And a drive to confront crime on her own. With this... Oh, oh look, and there, and there goes the Barbara Gordon from Harley Quinn, just like I said. New mission came another goal. To officially join Batman and Robin... As the next bat-ass crime fighter, Batgirl! You know... Full name, Barbara Gordon. Height, 5'7". 170 centimeters, weight 126 pounds, 57 kilograms, aka Oracle, Emmy Bedos, Marple Miss 99, aided the Bat Family, Justice League, and Teen Titans, was originally adopted. I almost did. No! How come she's called Bat Girl when Dick gets to be Robin? Her identity and individuality shouldn't be anchored to the patriarchal idea that women are publicly defined by the men in their life. Uh, well said, Boomstick. Now, joining the Bat family wasn't easy. The dynamic duo weren't exactly keen on adding a third wheel. But Bat Gal worked hard to prove herself. And she's not just a tough fighter, she's super smart. With a strong understanding of technology and computer hacking, Batgirl knew she could prove useful to a team that relies on tech. Like, you know, Batman and Robin. How could the Bat and the Bird say no? And after settling into the... Skills and abilities. Peak human physicality, martial arts, judo, karate, dragon style, kung fu, boxing, stick fighting. Oh, uh, gymnastics, computer hacking, expert detective. Batcave, she honed her skills by training with the Batman himself. Who's basically the world's greatest ninja times a thousand. Not like she was some rookie before that, though. Her cop dad had her study a bunch of martial arts like judo and karate. Of course, Batgirl wears her own custom bat suit, lined with Kevlar and filled to the brim with advanced technology. It's basically a slimmed-down combination of military-grade armor and spy gear that even James Bond would be jealous of. Heck, Batman's version helped him survive this humongous explosion! Look at the size of that thing! She also added plenty of her own tools to her arsenal for an extra advantage. Everything from a taser to pepper spray, concussion bombs, smoke bombs, and foam bombs that can bind people in place. What's with all the bombs? And of course, she's got batarangs. Dummy? Here I come. I'm just dying to help. Everyone knows about the basic shuriken the bats are famous for. Ow. But <laughs> Miss Gordon also carries an electric variant. Huh. Well, that was... Yeah, oh. that's, that's a very nice of you. That you never... You never appreciate me. You know what? It, it, if there was an award 
for being nice. You, you wouldn't win it. If you, you three hear me? Those are awesome. Let me try. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, why, why? <laughs> anyway. I guess that means she also has explosive boomerangs. Bat girls also got guns, but like non-bullet ones. She's got a gun that shoots sleeping gas, a gun that shoots a grappling hook, and a gun that shoots batarangs. Because why would you throw something when you can fire it out of a gun? She's quick enough to dodge bullet fire and avoid electricity from live wire. See, that's what I find strange. How did she just somehow, like, immediately figure out Batman's secret identity? Well, Tim Drake figured out Batman's secret identity because of a uh, because he went to see uh, what should I call it? Well, Flying Grayson when he was just a kid. Well, you're saying that he just remembered him from the crowd or something? Yeah. The, he, the thing was. He remembered. He remembered Dick doing a move uh, that was like a triple. I think it was a triple backflip, and only certain people, or quite who backflip, only certain people could do. It. He remembered seeing Robin do that. You know, after that order, and it was like, oh, he was there. And that's where he found out the band was. You know, who's basically just a scarier version of Blue Jamie Fox from that one movie about amazing spiders. Also, Bat Barb's tough enough to tank a five-story fall or have a friggin' building explode while she's inside. Damn, girl, you're unstoppable. Well, until she was shot and paralyzed from the waist down. Yep. But even with the loss of her legs, she... The question is, how did, how did Joker even find out where she lived? That is, that is an interesting query. Rallied around her peers and kept fighting the good fight as Oracle. Remember those computer skills? Well, they sure came in handy here, along with her photographic memory. Plus, she could dodge bullets while in a freaking. Why was Mantle a back roll even if you could see him? He's not the second bronze, no longer old enough for a uh, Wheelchair! Man, I bet she'd kick ass at Murder Ball. Certainly setting her apart from the likes of Batman and Robin. She even learned stick fighting while still paralyzed. She can beat your ass even while sitting on hers. What can she do in that wheelchair? Well, at least that shows how determined she is. Well, besides, walk. Not for too long, though. She eventually received neural implants in her brain and spine that let her walk again. Okay, so that actually explains the that actually explains the whole thing with Gotham Knights. Because I was actually trying to figure that out because I do remember seeing the wheelchair next to her, but like I couldn't figure out like how was she able to walk. And then again, that just brings it to another question I had. If they had the technology to do that, why didn't they go ahead and do that? Unfortunately, these devices are vulnerable to short circuiting and AI hacking, but they're an acceptable risk and have been improved over time to resist such incursions. Which just makes her that much harder to beat. I mean, she's strong enough to outmuscle a giant mutant shark and suplex a fully grown tiger. Move over, Joe Exotic. Make way for the Tiger Queen. Thanks to her police father and her experience with the Bat family, Barbara Gordon's become a well rounded protector of her city. Crazy to think how far the wannabe sidekick has come. She's really stepped out of Batman's shadow and become her own hero the goddamn Batgirl. Overstepping yourself a little? Try me. Before Mary Jane, everyone's favorite spider superhero Peter Parker dated a girl named Gwendolyn Stacy. But then she fell off a bridge and died. The end. Except that isn't the end. The universe is full of possibilities. You killed the woman I love, and for that, you're going to die. You don't just say that. What a... That's, that, I wouldn't even consider that to be a generic superhero saying. What if, in another timeline, that never happened? What if Peter never found that radioactive spider that made him Spider-Man in the first place? What if the superhero was Gwen? Welcome to Earth-65. This Gwen was a teen kicking back in New York City. She's a drummer for her high school band and the daughter of a police chief. And she's this world's one and only Spider-Woman. Though you might know her as Spider-Gwen. Real name, Gwendolyn Maxine Stacy. Height, 5 foot 5, and I'm going to put this right here. Wait, why did I put that down? Wait, this one's not there. A.K. Ghost Spider, Laura Kinney, Tigra, La Muerte Face. Just like Eminem. Eminem. Formerly known as Spider Woman, often hallucinates Spider Ham. What? With her cool powers, she got busy fighting crime. 
But hey, who can blame her for showing off a bit? She does whatever a spider can. Though her police father didn't approve, insisting Spider-Woman could use her powers for the good of others. However, her close friend, the non-superpowered Peter of this world, had a different take. He was getting bullied all the time and idolized Spider-Gwen's power. So of course he figured the only way to stop the bullies was to get powers like hers. Except he accidentally turned himself into a giant monster lizard. Oh. Wait, became... wait. So he's the lizard in that in that uh, world? Yes, Mario from Spider Verse. Yeah. Well, I remember Spider Gwen from Spider Verse, but I don't remember seeing a back. It was our backstory when she was talking. Oh. Okay, whom the young Miss Stacy was forced to subdue. Peter ultimately succumbed to his experiments, dying in her arms. His death turned Spider-Woman into a fugitive on the run, but also inspired her to take her father's advice. It was time to step up as a superhero. With her spiderific powers, she can crawl on walls and stick to any surface. Imagine, you're sitting on your couch being all that is man. You look up at your ceiling, and instead of seeing a normal spider, there's a whole ass woman up there. Yes, please. <laughs> Spider-Woman also has the classic spider sense, which constantly scans her surroundings and alerts her to incoming danger. How many times have we said the word spider so far? We get to 50, do we get a free taco? Thanks to her spider sense, Gwen's moved fast enough to dodge bullets, lasers, and lightning from Electro. On his best day, classic Spider-Man's even dodged beams of light, at least for a bit before he got smacked. She's tough enough to power through point-blank explosions just as well as electrocution. And yes, she has similar powers as other spider people like main universe Peter, who survived a massive explosion that annihilated the top of this skyscraper. And she's strong enough to punch Rhino through a wall, the, the guy, not another animal, and lift over 10 tons. But of course, to truly fit the role of Spider-Woman, she needed one last thing. Thanks to Janet Van Dyne, aka the Wasp, Gwen received her very own web shooters. Why do these people keep using sticky stuff that just gets everywhere? Kinda gross. The web fluid isn't just sticky, but incredibly strong. Hey! The tense of- I found that kind of strange, just, just by the fact how it just kind of stretched out like a hand. Like, just, well, you, you know, from Amazing Spider-Man 2. The strength of regular spider silk can reportedly reach up to 178 kilograms per square millimeters in a cross section. Scaled up to a human sized web, it would be nearly as strong as steel. Oh, come on, Wiz, this is a new shirt. That can't be. It already has beer stains all over it. That's just my style. Like all those girls that just cut a bunch of holes in their jeans and ruin them. Even with those similar powers, Gwen's not your average spider hero. She's made a habit of traveling throughout the multiverse. And she lost her powers permanently. They were stolen by Cindy Moon because she's the worst. Gwen could briefly restore her powers with these isotope things, but she didn't really have a good solution until she found Venom. No, oh, really, Venom. You know, the scary alien sludge monster guy that eats brains? Despite it being, well, Venom, Gwen took the symbol. Equipment, web shooters, multi-traversal travel device, venom symbiote, powers, wall crawling, spider sense, super strength, speed, durability, enhanced agility. Built for herself. Formed into her new suit, her powers were fully restored. Oh yes, she's back in black. I should note this version of Venom is a bit different from the one you're most familiar with. It was lab created and not nearly as potent or powerful. It can push oh. talons, camouflage her, and do some limited shape shifting. But when I'm when symbiote has no inherent connection to any hive mind and lacks many of the biological qualities inherent to symbiotes present in the main 616 universe. Won't be reforming from a puddle of goo or anything crazy like that. Also, she can create even more spiders? Who the hell came up with that? I guess the only problem is the symbiote's weak to loud sounds and fire. It's basically scared of a metal concert. Ironic, considering its preferred look. But it's still Venom, and its violent nature tore Gwen apart. Eventually, she wound up unmasked and indicted. What do you mean unmasked? Her name's Spider Gwen. Everyone should have figured that out. Yeah, that's what I was actually gonna say when we when we when I first started talking about Spider Gwen. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Spider Gwen, but the name kind of gives away too much information. I mean, there can't be that many Gwens in one city, so. I mean, just gotta narrow it down. Have you been paying attention? Yes, Wiz. 
badass spider chick kick lots of ass. <sighs> After serving her time, snapped a robot's neck as avoided laser beams, Dice Electro's lightning are rubbing him out to be a bullet. Provide the point blank explosion with a lizard, rhino, vulture, and a terror. I'm even gaining control of the symbiote, shifting it into her more iconic getup. Gwen took a trip to the mainline 616 Earth. Basically, she got about as popular as Spider-Man, and they wanted to jam her in the universe. There, she regained her secret identity. But since there were a few other Spider-Women running around, she took on a new moniker. Ghost Spider. Ghost Spider! That's right! This chick's too good to protect one world, she's got two! It's awesome to see how far she's come from teenage show-off to guardian of the multiverse. And that's why I work alone. I need... Wait, did they make a Spider-Gwen series? Yeah, it's called Marvel's Rising. Technically, it's not about Spider-Gwen, but it's a few minutes. Oh, so what, it's just about different heroes or just Spider-Man? Different female heroes. Oh. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But while these gals have survived some close shaves in the past, you too can get a close shave with Harry's. Tired of overpaying for razors that are overdesigned, overpriced, and out of touch? Well, Harry's is a return to quality blades at an honest price, as low as $2 per refill. Great for when I accidentally spend most of my money on squirrel hunting gear. So basically every time he gets a paycheck. Harry's is delivering their sharpest shave ever without upping the prices. That's right! With Harry's blades, guys shaving four times a week have said their eighth shave was as smooth as their first, and they're available wherever you shop, online or in store. Harry stands by their blades with a 100% money-back guarantee on harrys.com. Harry's is a great offer for death metal viewers. New U.S. customers can redeem a Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash death for just three dollars. You'll get a five-blade razor featuring their new sharper blades, a weighted ergonomic handle, foaming shave gel with aloe, and a travel cover to protect your blade when you're on the go. Just go to harrys.com slash death and redeem your trial offer today. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Okay, before we get into this, please note that we've watched a few of these before. And note, some of them that we've watched, they seemed obvious on who would... They seemed obvious who would win. Yeah, and with this one, I don't really know who's going to win, but my money's on Batgirl. <laughs> Lions out spider boy. Sorry, Barbara. She stood absolutely no chance in that death battle. If anything, she was way too arrogant. And also, you know, Diana is a demigod, so can't exactly beat a demigod when all you got is a, a magical sword and a powerful unicorn. Mm -hmm. thing. I said take me to Miles, not this <laughs> Seems like you're the stupid one for dropping by unannounced. Don't you treat your guests well. <laughs> Taken Dracula. Yeah, exactly. What's the whole, like? What's with all the supersized stuff that's in his cave? Like a supersized penny, a a a, a T Rex statue. That actually, I think it's actually a robot. Why though? Why have it? Like, what's the? Uh, point? I'll get out of your hair. See ya.
That that was like a uh, well, what what was that DC like fighting game? Uh, injustice. Yeah, it was like an injustice like finishing move or something. End of the road, loser. <laughs> the invisibility. I'll find you. You're on my turf. Too late. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh. oh. Ah, yeah, it's broken life. Oh. Okay, to be honest, I forgot about the symbiote. KO! Looks like Batgirl's turned into Split Girl. Batgirl wielded an impressive arsenal with plenty of tools suited to combat Gwen's abilities. Not to mention, Gwen was no match for her stellar intelligence. Which made this pretty close. There are plenty of versions of this fight where Batgirl could take down the symbiote with sound and fire. But even with such weaknesses, the Ghost Spider held enough of her own advantages to take the win more times than not. So while Batgirl's training was certainly better, the spider sense is just super broken. Gwen and other yep. Spideys have held up- When you think about it, it really is broken. <laughs> like, they can literally tell when a bullet or any type of harmful projectile is coming from, like, a mile away. Against martial arts masters like Captain America, who is definitely on par with super ninjas like Batman. Not to mention Gwen was clearly stronger than Barbara. Plus, Spider-Man survived that skyscraper bomb with the same powers, which Batgirl definitely wouldn't walk away from. It was way bigger than the building blast that Batgirl barely survived. Hell, Batman's biggest explosion survival feat doesn't even match it. Batman survived is visibly larger. A character's proven durability diminishes the further away they get from the epicenter of the explosion. Oh. Considering the destruction shown, the TNT yield Batman survived was less than the damage Spider-Man would so. Um, yeah, so it's basically saying that since he was farther away from the actual center of the explosion, he didn't take as much damage. Listen, I know explosions, and by measuring the size of this blast, I can tell it's equal to about 60 tons of TNT. But applying the same math stuff to Spider-Man's, it's more than double that. To be frank, Batgirl had the tools she needed to take down Spider-Woman. Gwen was simply stronger, faster, tougher, and made good use of the spider sense, making it extremely difficult for Barbara to land a decisive hit before taking one herself. It seems Betty, but Batgirl was overwebbed by Spider Gwen spinning this one in her favor. Jesus webbed. The winner is Spider Gwen. Thanks for checking out that episode of Death Battle. If you like. Well, that's it for that. I hope you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna get off, and we're gonna have another video coming out tomorrow. So, I hope, so hope you guys are willing to watch that. And, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. Bye. Bye.